Good morning and welcome. We are so glad that you were able to join us this morning for worship. Do have one announcement for anyone that would like to join our virtual Bible school. It will be offered over uh, through Bethel on starting tonight, the 26th, through Thursday, uh, the 30th. It will be done uh, through Zoom, and it will be from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. We'll be putting that out, so if you'd like to join and participate in that, please feel free. This year, the title will be Knights of North Castle. So if you'd like to join, we'd love to have it. Let us pray. Lord of preparation and transition, we are already halfway through our summer. And we sit and we wonder where the time went. And we wonder, did we spend it well in your service? Give us, Father, these next few weeks for renewal that we may be prepared to work through your church for our community and our world. And keep us mindful of the needs of family, friends, and others, that we will be your faithful disciples. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, if you will, join me in the prayer of confession. Diligent Lord, who watches over us at all times, be with us all these days. We confess that we've allowed a host of worries and frustrations to, to crowd out your word for us. As you give us peace and your transforming love, Father, forgive all those times when we've been less than faithful disciples for you. Gently visit us again with your healing power. Restore our hope and courage and joy for all the times ahead. And we ask this in the name of the Master Healer, Jesus. Amen. And hear these words of assurance. Here is some wonderful news. When we were worrying and fretting, God has been at work in our lives, offering healing and peace. Receive these gifts in the name and love of our Lord. Amen. This morning's sermon came at, uh, I, I got a request for someone who was listening or who listens to us on uh, Sundays and they asked about taking that step out, stepping out of that uh, truck or out of that comfort zone and, and stepping out and doing something to make a difference. So I have picked uh, two pieces of scripture that we'll use uh, today for hopefully that will be encouragement and encourage us to be bold and to take that step of faith. The first piece of scripture comes from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the village of Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think of what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, the angel told her, for God has decided to bless you. You will become pregnant and have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can I have a baby? I'm, I'm still a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. And what's more, your relative Elizabeth will be, has become pregnant at her old age. 
People used to say she was barren, but she's already in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant, and I am willing to accept whatever he wants. May everything you have said come true. And then the angel left. The second scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately after this, Jesus made his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake. While he sent the people home, afterward he went into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him, they screamed in terror, thinking he was a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them all at once and said, It's all right. I am here. Don't be afraid. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you by walking on the water. All right then, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. And when he looked around at the high waves, he became terrified and he began to sing. Save me, Lord, save me, he shouted. Instantly, Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed him. You don't have much faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? And when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him, saying, You really are the Son of God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this morning, I want to look at a couple of individuals from the Bible who, who stepped out on a limb. They, they moved beyond their comfort zone and, and, and tried to make a difference. The first is Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was willing to accept God's plan for her life. She, she stepped out. She moved beyond her comfort zone and she waited patiently for God to go with her. And then there's Peter, fisherman first class, followed Jesus by stepping out in the rough seas and moved beyond his comfort zone. In the Gospel of Luke this morning, we heard of the account of Mary's encounter with the angel Gabriel. Gabriel was delivering God's promise to Mary that she would become pregnant and have a child, the Messiah. And his kingdom would never end. But we see a little doubt when Mary responds and says, How can I? I I'm a virgin. And the angel told her that the baby she could see would be conceived by the Holy Spirit, and the baby would be the Son of God. He reassured her and assured her, For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant. May it be for me as you have said. And we see that Mary was willing to move beyond her comfort zone and wait on the Lord. For Mary learned, or from Mary, we learn this lesson that God can cause us some discomfort. You know, Mary's life was routine. It was normal. And then all of a sudden, here comes Gabriel. And Mary's plan to have this normal wedding and, and to start a family after having her marriage. Having God's child at a wedlock brought a whole lot of challenges for her and Joseph. Challenges that otherwise they would have never faced. They were ridiculed. They were forced to flee. The prophet Simon foretold that she would not enjoy a peaceable or comfortable life.
when Jesus, or excuse me, after Jesus was born, and on the eighth day, Mary and Joseph took him to the temple. And the prophet Simon took the child in his arms and he said, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. And we say, and we know, of course, that during their life, both Mary and Joseph, or excuse me, Jesus, experienced sorrow and suffering. When Mary listened and obeyed God's will, she experienced many blessings. But she also experienced pain. She experienced blessings when she witnessed her son change water to wine at the wedding feast. She was blessed by his help in his work with the family business. She witnessed his public ministry and was blessed by all those amazing miracles of, of healing and, and those words that he spoke with authority. But at the crucifixion, we find Mary standing near the foot of the cross. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple who he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, he said, and here's your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. At Jesus' crucifixion, there were, there were very few there to offer support. But Jesus' first words from the cross were to his mom. And Mary had that painful experience of, of having to watch her son be crucified and then ultimately die. Mary had given birth to Jesus and she thought he was going to be the, the savior of the world. But at that day, that day at the cross, her dreams got shattered. But we have to remember that God may use these, these times that we experience crisis to, to motivate us, to get us to step out of our comfort zone. We all want God to give us comfort. But every now and then, God calls us to follow Him. And in following Him, we go through times of discomfort. Have you noticed in your Christian walk, when, when you're getting comfortable with, with what's going on at work, and you, you're getting comfortable at home with the family, and then all of a sudden, boom! Circumstances happen, things come about, and, and they, they push you out of that comfort zone. They take you away from that comfort that you feel. There's a story about three frogs hopping across the road. One frog wasn't looking, and he got caught, jumped in, ended up jumping into a muddy rut there in the road. He got stuck, he couldn't move. But he told the other two frogs to go ahead, that he would rest there for a little bit. And the other two frogs hopped on ahead. And in a few minutes, they heard, come on, come on. And the stuck frog was no longer stuck. And he leaped and he went past them. And they said, well, we thought you were stuck back there. And he said, well, it was. But then I saw this big Mack truck coming toward me and I moved on. Jesus' calling isn't always to, to this career of, of, of prosperity, power, and status. And we see that when God called Moses and he told him, go to Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the most powerful man on earth at that time. And tell him to give his workers leave without pay to worship a God that the Pharaoh doesn't believe in. 
And then, to go and to convince a, a group of timid people to just run away, run into the desert. That, Moses, is your call. Moses looked at him and said, well, here I am, but let's end there. A calling is something we do for God. A career is something that we do for ourselves. Pharaoh had a career. Moses had a call. Haman had a career. Esther had a call. Pilate had a career. Jesus had a call. If we live, or continue to live in a world of, that has human flaws and failings, we will experience challenges every now and then. And God will call us to step out of that comfort zone and to meet those challenges. So there are times when God can be referred to as a discomforter. But there's one thing that I can be sure of, we all can be sure of, is that when God calls us to step out of that comfort zone, He's there and He's walking with us. You know, the Bible mentions several walks. God walked in the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day. Abraham walked with Isaac on the road to Mount Moriah. Moses and the children of Israel walked across the Red Sea. Joshua and his army walked around Jericho seven times. Two disciples walked on the road to Emmaus and then had a stranger join them. Jesus walked on the Via Dolorosa. Golgotha. For me, one of the other memorable walks was that taken by Peter. As he stepped out of that boat and he walked on rough water. Matthew tells us that Jesus had just fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. And then Jesus sent the disciples off in their boat so that he could go off by himself and pray. The disciples got about halfway across the sea and the storm comes up and the boat is rocked. And during the worst of the storm, the disciples look and they see a person walking on the water. They think this is a ghost coming. So they're screaming because they're scared. And then all of a sudden, the this, this speaker calls out, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. That's Jesus. When we face the storms in our lives, Jesus is near. He's there and he tells us, do not be afraid. While some of the disciples are in the boat hanging on for dear life, old reckless, spontaneous Peter just calls out and says, all right, if it's you, Lord, tell me to come on out and join you on the water. Jesus says, come on. Peter steps out and he's walking on the water and he gets, starts heading toward Jesus. And then he took his eyes off Jesus. He saw the waves beating around him and then he begins to sink. He gets scared. He yells out, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, took hold of him and lifted him up. He helped Peter get back into the boat, and as they got back on the boat, the storm stopped. Before Peter stepped out of the boat, he made sure it was Jesus calling him to come. There's a difference between being a daredevil and taking that step of faith. So man who appeared at the pearly gates and he was asked have you done anything of particular merit the man says well i can think of one thing once i came upon a gang of these these high energy bikers who were threatening the young woman i directed them to leave her alone and they didn't listen 
So I approached the largest one, the, the most muscled up biker there, and I smacked him on the head. I kicked his bike over. I ripped the nose ring out of his nose and I threw it on the ground and I told him, you leave her alone or you'll answer to me. St. Peter was impressed and he said, well, when did this happen? And the man looked at him and said, oh, it just happened a little bit ago. There's a big difference between faith and foolishness. Peter's comfort zone was, was being in that boat. And Jesus called Peter to step out of that comfort zone. Now, remember that Jesus didn't tell him to come out and walk on calm seas. Jesus was walking on rough sea, waves rising and falling. Now you could see Jesus and then you couldn't. Peter had never seen anyone walk on water before. And when he stepped out of that boat, he stepped out of his comfort zone. I can only wonder what was going through his mind as he placed his foot on that water. I can imagine his, his, his heart pounding as he, he started taking those steps. When God calls us to do something good in his name usually involves taking steps of faith. It involves trusting God for the result. And even though we don't know the answers or how things are going to work out, we have to take a step of faith. If you remember the Indiana Jones um, movie with uh, Indiana Jones and the Last and the Last Crusade. Indy has to, <clears throat> excuse me, pass three tests to reach that holy grail and save his dad. The first test is that is the breath of God, and as he walked down a corridor, Indy has to bow down and at just the right moment to keep from having his head cut off by these large revolving metal blades. The second test is the Word of God. And he must walk just on the right stones that will spell out God's name in Latin to keep from falling through the floor. And the third is the real test of faith, the path of God. And he comes to this edge of this large chasm about a hundred feet across and a thousand or more feet deep. But there on the other side of that chasm is the doorway to the Holy Grail. And his instructions were only in the leap from the lion's head will you prove your worth. And it seems Indy talking to himself going, it's impossible. Nobody can jump over this. Then he hits it. He realizes this test requires a leap of faith. And you switch over and you see his dad lying there and he said, you must believe, boy. You must believe. And with all the faith that, that Indiana can muster, he, he walks, takes out. As he lifts his foot, he steps out into thin air. He steps out. And as he steps out, this invisible path is there and he holds him up. It takes that leap of faith to move beyond our comfort zone and to make a difference. One person might say that I'm a game, I'm a game for extreme sports. Skydiving, deep sea diving, bungee jumping. But I'm not ready for extreme discipleship. Then there are those who are adverse to any risk at all. And I'm not going to risk anything that's going to get me hurt. So I'm just going to stay home in bed and, and, and just stay right here. Not step out. 
an interesting fact though that is that shows that each year about 500,000 Americans require emergency room treatment for injuries they sustain by falling out of bed. And when you think, what's the name of the best selling chair? It's Lazy Boy, not Risky Boy or Worker Boy, but Lazy Boy. You know, Peter may have had his faults. He was impulsive, he was brash. But there were 11 others who, who neglected to, to step out of the boat. Peter stepped out, putting himself in a position not only to fail, but also to grow. Remember, Jesus is in the water, not in the boat. What is your comfort zone? Do you make excuses so that you can stay in the boat? When was the last time that you stepped out of your boat? And remember, as we step out of our boat, we may fail. But Jesus is there. Jesus is there to, to turn that failure around. And he's there so that we won't go through it alone. We have a choice to make. We can stay in the boat with this life, life jacket on, or we can have one leg in the boat and one leg out. Or we can step completely out of the boat into an unknown territory. You know, six years ago, a young man was nearing retirement, trying to figure out what he was going to do next. Do I stay in a similar career field? Do I go and complete a degree? Start off on a new journey? Sure would have been easy to stay in the boat. To stay in that same career field and, and, and to be comfortable. But then he goes and he checks into getting that degree. Within an hour, he had applied and was registered for classes. He stepped out of the boat. He stepped into a new career field. He stepped into the pulpit. This young man knew, you probably know who I'm talking about. I knew that Jesus was going to be with me, that he would walk with me, and that he would help me on this journey. Jesus can be our discomforter. Jesus calls us to walk with him. You know, when Jesus calls us, he, he promises to be our helper, promises to be our supporter and, and our encourager. As Peter began to sink, what did Jesus do? He reached out. He lifted him up. Remember last week we talked about how, how Jesus knows us. He knows what we're thinking. He knows what's going on in here. He understands our weaknesses and, and our doubts. Our weaknesses and our doubts don't keep Jesus from helping us. What does it take for us to receive God's hand? Real simple. All we have to do is say, Lord, help me. It, it doesn't take perfect life. It doesn't take education, wealth, great works, or popularity to receive God's hand. Simply confess, I need you, Lord. I can't help myself. Lord, Help me. When God calls us to follow him, we respond by saying, I'll do what I can. And I'll trust you, Lord, to be there and help me along the way. So this morning, is, is God calling you to a new adventure, to a new journey? 
We may choose the way of comfort, and, and, and for doing so, we may live longer. We may have a stress-free life. But we will miss an adventure filled with pain as well as reward. When we step out of our boat, step out of that comfort zone, we will make a greater impact for God. Mary moved beyond her comfort zone, and she had the privilege of being the mother of Jesus. Peter stepped out of the boat and, and walked on water for a short period of time, but he walked, continued that walk with Jesus, and Jesus said, you are Peter, a rock, and on your foundation of faith, I will build my church. There are things that are happening in our community. The pandemic, the, the, the outfall of, of opioid abuse, of social unrest, of inequalities, and all these things are impacting the church. So as individuals, as a church, let's figure out how we can answer that call, how we can step out of our comfort zone, how we can walk through those rough seas to the glory of God, to where we can make a difference in this world. You know, I thought it interesting. I heard this song the other day. This is a, a Thomas Brett song. And it talks about being a light. And, and, and I thought that it sort of went along with, this, with the sermon today. In a world full of hate, be a light. In a time full of war, be peace. In a place that needs change, make a difference. In a world full of hate, be a light. So as we look this morning and, and think about that journey and we hear that call, let's be that light. Let's take that step. And let's make a difference for the glory of our Lord. As you leave and go about today, please go forth with joy, celebrating all the ways for us to serve our Lord. And ask that the Lord give you the courage, the hope, the peace, and the love that we may bear these gifts and share with others. Go in peace and have a wonderful day. Amen.